Hello and welcome to Talking F1. We're a podcast from Grand Prix Grandstand that does more or less what that title says. We talk about F1. More specifically, we talk about Formula All. That means Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Three, and the W Series. We are going with a slightly different format this week where we focus on one series at a time. And in this video, we're shining the spotlight on W Series. Be sure to check out the rest of the GP Grandstand YouTube channel to hear us talking about Formula Two and Formula One at Silverstone as well. I'm your host, Jim Kimberley, and I'm joined, as always, by Drive Tribe Supreme Chancellor of the F1, F2 and F3 Tribe, Timo Albers Daily. How are you, Timo? I'm pretty good, thanks, Jim. How about yourself? Yes, not so bad, thank you. Excited to be talking F all about Alice Powell being the home hero again in W Series, Fabian Volven's best finish yet, Bites Cavissa and Sarah Moore with the best racing over the entire Silverson weekend, including the F2 and F1, saying hello to Abby Pulling and some frustrating times for Sidakova, Koyama, Cook, Marta Garcia and Jess Hawkins. Well, where to start, Timo? I guess we have to really talk about Alice Powell and she is now championship leader again and she did a championship favourite. Yeah, we've got a championship on our hands, Jim. It's, it's refreshing and, I mean, a little bit satisfying maybe more for me than for other people around the world because it's two British, British women competing at the top of the game, so... It's nice to see that Jamie Chadwick's not running away with it to, too much and that she's got some serious competition on her hands. Yeah, Alice Bell was an absolute uh, star from 2019, um, I thought. But that one race with such a short championship where she collided with Volvend, um, this time, thankfully, they didn't collide, seemed to take her out of the championship. And this time, yeah, leading it twice. I'm quite hopeful that it could be an Alice Powell championship win, but only for the sheer factor of variety like you alluded to. And we can't discount Jamie Chadwick, can she? She finished third place, but a bit ineffective all weekend. She just never seemed to have the pace to, to catch up even after that safety car. No, but at the same time, it's it's all about that word again, consistency. She's, she might, wasn't at the top of the game, but she was still on the podium at the end of the day. So that's, that's why she's going to be the biggest threat, I think, to, to Alice over the course of the entire season. I mean, even though it's a short season race-wise, it's still a long calendar in terms of time. So you don't know how that's going to impact the championship too much at this point. And as you say, in 2019, there was one race that uh, threw everything out of the window for Alice on, on being a competitive um, or going for the championship, rather. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time, but you would think it's those two at the moment. And if one of them has a bad weekend and one of the other ones in the top five, maybe wins a race, then uh, who knows? I mean, so far, we've only had two different race winners, but I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it was just stuck between the two of them for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's uh, it's really hopeful that we'll get a big championship fight with more people joining. At the moment, it's a bit of a two people running away with it. And yeah, the, the DNFs don't seem to be as much of an issue. I remember last year, we saw it in the W Series Driven documentary that Powell said that she had worries about her car and then the second race in succession, she retired. And those retirements make such a big difference in such a short season. Slightly longer this year, eight races versus six. But one retirement from either Chadwick or Powell. And yeah, I think you're right. We could really start seeing Volvend, for example, more up there. Kimmelainen, all these drivers starting to jump up into the championship. They could, as well. they could easily mirror Formula 2 this weekend. You could have one of the top people have, a, have an off weekend and straight away there's someone you, you'd kind of forgotten about almost and like, oh, straight up there then. And I think Fabian would be that person at the moment. Yeah, Fab is really, really impressed me. So let's talk about Fabian for a bit because she led the race, was on course for her first victory in W Series. It would have been her well, it was her best result anyway, but it would have been her best result with a win. And she's always a driver from 2019 that was always up there. She wasn't ever, well, we like we just mentioned, she wasn't ever winning the races. Uh, let me just pull up the 2019 results for her. So sixth, seventh, third, fourth, one fifteenth at Assen, and then fifth place. And that's the sort of consistency that we often mention, always grabbing points. And this year, two podiums already. The only reason she hasn't, got up in the championship fight so far is it's a p10 versus a p8 or a p6 or something like that's only one point but she's really showing her credentials i think to be one of the stars of the championship if she finished in third place come season's end i wouldn't be too surprised how about you no i wouldn't be surprised at all um she kind of strikes me if we're going to keep on with the silverstone theme of she was kind of the charles leclerc of w series so close and yet so far it was 
you kind of you weren't mad that Alice Power won, but you were a little bit mad at the same time because it would have been just so nice for her to get to get those. As you say, second place is the best result so far, and she's got another step up the up the podium from, from last time. But it would have been nice to get that that second step up while she was while she was there. But I think the fact that she got so close and she's been consistent this season and she's improving shows that whilst we were just saying that it looks like it's a Jamie V. Alice fight, you can't you can't quite counter out just yet. And I'm quite happy about that. Could end up being with something like we saw with F1 and Verstappen and Hamilton coming together. Maybe we'll have Chadwick and Powell come together and really throw the championship open if both of those drivers were uh, taken out. Let me just read from Fabian's comments after the race when she was in the press conference. And yeah, you might have seen as well, Timo, and anybody listening and watching, that she seems to be having quite a lot of oversteer, um, but that might have been from the pressure of Alice. And I did ask if that was a contributing factor to then locking up uh, when she lost that lead position. And she said, of course, she was pushing a lot in the beginning. So when safety car came out, she already thought it was going to be tough having Alice right at her back. Um, and then she thinks there's a follow-up. She didn't have a good exit of turn 15, which is Stowe. And then saw Alice coming closer. I just followed by breaking too late and locking up. Just couldn't keep the pace up in the end. I think we gambled a bit on the setup since qualifying because we knew we need some good top speed. Of course, it caused some oversteer, so we'll see what we can do for Hungary. But if Volven's controlling a car like that with oversteer to lead the race and really not be under threat for second place in the end, yeah, things looking very, very good for us. So very excited. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the things where Alice is generally from from most sport got a lot more experience under a belt from what I know but it's, and it kind of shows the, the difference there in terms of not saying that Fabian isn't championship material but it might explain why uh, Alice is is more in favor of, of being a being the 2021 champion because she's able to remain calm under this pressure she didn't buckle she could have easily locked up and ruined getting keeping second place and Jamie whilst she wasn't terribly far behind in this and she wasn't too close either but a, a mistake but Fabian made if Alice had done that, Jamie could have closed right up on her. And the fact that it was Fabian who made the mistake and then Alice was able to capitalise and it just shows maybe that extra bit of experience and maybe that, that championship material there. We never really see, oh, we never really understand, I guess, us just watching on what that difference of knowing how to win a race is. And maybe that is, like you allude to, the difference between Powell and Volvend right now, that Powell has won races, She's leading the championship. She knows how to control. And she's got the age experience. Of course, she's been doing coaching with Abby Pulling, who we're going to speak about, and other drivers. So it could have just been that little bit of knowing how to win a race um, and Volvin maybe nervous or just feeling the pressure and locking up and breaking too late going into club. That could have been that key difference. Um, but let's move on from those two. Uh, Congratulations to, to those and Chadwick making the podium. So, yeah, championship fight looking great. One of the drivers we're not seeing in a championship fight, which is surprising me, surprising many, is Baitska Visser, who scored points finally. Um, but another poor start for her. And I don't know what's going on with her starts. And it could be related to the engine replacement. She had an engine replacement just before the race. So maybe that's an issue. But we've seen a repeatedly this season fall back from the start it wasn't so uh, bad as it has been where she essentially went down to the back after stalling more or less but this time it was about two or three places she lost and then had to fight her way back up and was battling Sarah Moore um, with what I have said in the introduction was the best bit of racing that we saw across let me get this right six races was it if you include F1 sprint um, over the weekend what did you think of that Moore versus Visser fight? Because for me, side by side action all the way from I think it's turn three to turn nine, amazing stuff. No, it's it's, it's it was great to see because I mean, as, as you mentioned earlier, the, the driven documentary came out, so you could have a look at the 2019 action remind you. And not that there's not been any action this year so far, but it kind of gave me the 2019 vibes. And was like, oh yeah, this is what they've been advertising is going to happen, and it was really nice to just get that good battle, especially from two drivers where we know that they can race that hard and respect each other without anything bad going on there. Um, and it was, and it's like you say, it was, it was a, it was a better weekend for Vista, but it was still not quite where you expected it to be. I mean, I'm, I'm glad she got points and I'm glad that hopefully this is 
the turnaround for her, but she needs to get on the podium next time out if she wants to to be in the championship fight because I mean while she's got some points board, she's still fairly far behind overall and I just wonder if the gap between last season W Series and this one contributes to it I know that she's been doing a lot of she did wet last year and she's doing it this year naturally she missed the, the Monza round because that was this weekend as well so it was just uh, Sophia Flush and Tatiana Caldera on there but um, I wonder if having driven in that category for such a long time in the gap between has maybe impacted the single seat capability or if that's maybe explaining why she's not doing so well off the start maybe she's just used to a different setup or something I'm, I'm, I, I could be completely wrong Jim but uh, it's just an interesting bit of speculation I thought I'd throw in there yeah it's uh, it's difficult to know um fourth place you qualified and then sixth place so it was a good qualifying but, it's, hmm. but again like you say there was the, the race start and for some reason that's just uh, not helping this, this year yeah, and let's not discount the fact that what we saw in the opening round with Emma Kimmelainen and Hitten is making a huge difference on her championship campaign as True. well. Um, three races in out of eight, somehow we've gone a month and then W Series is approaching its halfway point after only starting in, in June. It's, it's crazy. And somehow it doesn't finish until November. It's uh, the, the, well, if we speak about F2, the spacing out between those, uh, W Series this weekend, a real cramp, compact season. But great to watch. I'm really happy to see more support series. I do really wish, though, uh, this is not really on the agenda, but there was more races per weekend because that half an hour of racing goes so quick. You can have a race like we saw this weekend at Silverstone, which wasn't one that's going to be hugely memorable. Um, great to see. I know we had the one issue with the safety car coming out, but it wasn't thanks to any massive collisions, but great to see more racing that hasn't so stopped started. We saw quite a lot of racing, I thought, in 2019 that had safety car after safety car after safety car. We did about 10 minutes of actual racing. That's not the case thus far in 2021. But yeah, I'm I'm just feeling that you're going to get, was it going to be eight races, half an hour per race, plus one lap, as I like to keep reminding us. But we're going to have four hours of racing come the season end, and that's how we decide the championship victor. And... But though we had the reverse grid Assen race in 2019, but I just think it's not a lot, especially when you consider F2 and F3. I must say that the four hours in total, I hadn't really thought of it from that perspective, but you make quite a valid point there. And it's, I, I think that's one of the things they definitely need to change format wise, especially because if for no other reason, it's on the same weekend as F1 and F2 and F3. Um, in that, that they're the only race that has a, a time aspect to it. It's not a fixed number of laps. I feel if, because like when, when the safety guard came out in, in Austria, you were losing time. Whereas if it's laps, you you lose less, I feel. But um, I feel like you could do with at least the same amount of laps as an F3 sprint race, perhaps, or something like this. I mean, then they're still not having to do mandatory pit stops. So it seems closest to F3 in that aspect. So even if, they didn't have a feature race and they just did two sprint races, one on the Saturday and one on the Sunday. Even if it ends up still being half an hour, if it's still like 21 laps, I still think, feel like they'd be able to find the time for it. So it would uh, and it'd make things more interesting, I feel, as well. Yeah, maybe a bit biased. I've got Porsches and all these other um, series racing, but like, like people know, if it's got a roof over the top, I'm just not interested personally. But yeah, that's my opinion. But yeah, just I'm enjoying W Series. I just kind of reverse good races want something there just to make something a little bit more entertaining for a race weekend like we saw in Silverson which wasn't going to be a barnstormer uh, but there wasn't many um, particularly great races we speak about F2 we speak about F1 and aside from the F1 start and end there was wasn't much going on I personally thought so yeah, now you're just airing a little bit of frustration but let's go a bit more into the positives again so um Tasman Pepper sadly isn't able to race and she was replaced in Austria by Rodest. And now she has had Abby Pulling jump in the seat in her W Series debut. And Abby Pulling, for people who don't know, has been racing in British F4 and is coached by Alice Powell. And the two of them seem to have a great working relationship together. A lot of banter going on between the two of them. Turns up in W Series and... Yeah, follows in the footsteps a little bit, I thought, of Alice by being completely not intimidated, not 
uh, falling down the order, not looking like a rookie is what I'm trying to say. Qualifies in eighth place, finishes in eighth place. And off the back of that Visser and Moore battle that I mentioned, she was there, Abby was there, just looking right behind and possibly trying to get past Moore as well when she backed out going into Cop's Corner. Um, I was hugely impressed by Abby. How about you, Timo? Yeah, no, definitely. It was... Uh... The, the apprentice coming up through the ranks a little bit there so it's great to see and again it's kind of what the w series is about giving the opportunity so i don't know how much we're going to see abby for the rest of the season but i mean a what a place to make a debut for w yeah. series if you're going to do it anyway might as well do it at silverstone especially with all the fans there this weekend as a british driver um, oh yeah i mean it was just box ticked after box ticked there i feel so and like you say qualifying in eighth was just tremendous again you, I think she's like did someone forget to tell her she's a rookie so she shouldn't be qualifying so highly um, but again out, out doing people who were there in the 29 season 2019 season sorry and it was just quite good and then I think oh but she only fin- she started where she finished or finished where she started rather but yeah but you know she's she's still a rookie and it was still consistent I feel like she was right there as you say in the more Vissa battle and if anything had happened there uh, she would have pounced immediately on that one. I think um, Alice Powers definitely talked of that uh, to, to capitalise on any opportunities like that. So it was great to see, and hopefully we get to see her at least once or twice more in the season. I don't know. I can't remember how many drivers they're rotating in that role, but uh, if Garcia Rest got two races, then surely we've got at least one more with, uh, with Abby. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know if Tasman will be able to race later in the season. I don't know what the North American travel restrictions are, and that's been part of the problem with, Tas- with Tasman being South African and the South African COVID uh, problems and the variants. So we'll see. There's also Caitlin Wood and Naomi Schiff who will be looking for a race. And I don't know if it's a double header in Austria that allowed Gosha to get those two races at the start of the season, but time will tell. It'd be nice to see all yeah, of them. If they do it two, for, two per driver, then all four of them. Yeah, on the assumption that Tasman can't race. We'll find out soon yeah. enough, I'm sure, with Hungary. Um, but maybe it'll be Gosha's had her too, if that's how it works, and Tasman can't join later, that Abby might get one later in the season. Um, maybe in the in the Americas, we'll see. But uh, yeah, you mentioned there quite rightly that she finished ahead of some 2019 more experienced drivers. And of those, let's go through them. Sabre Cook, Marta Garcia, Vicky Piria. Um well, she didn't finish ahead of Vicky Pierre, but uh, honestly, she did, but Vicky Pierre got points. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, she's really did impressive. But let's talk about these other drivers who we'd expect to be doing a bit better than they are. So Vicky's got one point at last from the Silverson race, so she finished 10th, but a bit of a messy season so far. Sabre Cook's qualified awfully, makes up positions in the race, but it's too late by then, unfortunately for her. Garcia has and W Series victory to her name and has yet to score a point this year. What's going wrong, Timo? Is this just that time out of the car, do you think? Or yeah, I feel like you can only contribute that to so much of it, though, to be honest. I mean, it's not like they've all not done any time in a car and have just been sitting at home twiddling their thumbs the entire time. So um, I'm glad Piria managed to get a point. Whilst it's still not quite as high up as we would maybe expect or would like, I'm glad that she's making that forward progress and getting that point in Silverstone, I think, will be... Hopefully, I'm not commentating cursing here or anything, but will hopefully be a good sign of things to come for Hungary. And again, with it not being a big gap to the Hungarian round, it should maybe if there's it's easy to carry momentum forward. I find there, as opposed to in F2, like we we're saying, where there's such a big gap between this round and the next. Um, as for the rest, Cook, I'm I, I think I said this in a previous podcast, or or maybe not, but I wonder if we had been able to get a proper W Series season last year whether or not she would have been there or not, or if she was there as a as someone who was helping to make up the numbers slightly this year, because from, from the look of the qualifying and the results, it doesn't, I, I don't see her being on the grid next year if it continues this way. I mean, the, the race director, if you, you watch Driven, um, I think he, he's pretty, he's, he's, he's strict, but he's fair in terms of who he wants on the grid. And I think if she doesn't put out some standing results, she was close to getting cut in 2019. So I don't know if she'll be there in 2022. And then who else was Marta Garcia? Yeah, she's been the big surprise for me, I feel, as well. Because again, like you say, race winner 2019. Just, I'm not sure what, I just don't know what's going on. But that was the point that bothers me the most, I think, because it's just, because as you say, there's the race winner. So it's just, she needs something happening to her soon. It's just 
another weekend to forget if your gas is. Yeah, maybe a bit more forgiving with uh, Sidakova and Koyama. Both scored a few more points. Um, Sidakova's uh, the, the odd one, but maybe shows that she is a rookie going from second place and uh, some great silverware in a second ever race to dropping that to 14th at Silverstone. I do think maybe that's in part down to her success in Austria last time out being that she had the extra round there and she yeah. knew the track better. So maybe if we'd had two in Silverstone, we would have seen her back on the podium for the second one. Could be that she does learn that way indeed. Um, we'll, we'll find out if she goes to the rest of these rounds where you're only racing once and doesn't score a point. But she seems to be that she's got some... You don't finish second by accident. You know, you finish last by accident. And so you don't keep Emma Kimmel in behind you with... Uh... Just, just without sweating. Precisely. And then Koyama, she's frustrating because she's clearly got pace and always seems to be able to overtake, as we saw in 2019. Fifth place at Austria 1, 18th in Austria 2, dead last, and then retiring with the spin in Silverstone. She was the same in 2019, um, that she seemed to be really, really fast and then goes downhill right at the end and qualified poorly, always did seem to do well. I, I like Mickey and I'd like to see yeah, having a Japanese race in motorsport is so crucial, I think, because of how much of an influence the country has in motorsport and motoring in mm. general. Um, and I'd love to see W Series grow. And if that includes uh, support from Japan, terrific. And Koyama will, of course, It'd be great to that. see them race in Suzuka or somewhere there. Wouldn't it be amazing? Track, so. Wouldn't it be amazing? Yeah. But yeah, I, I, can't, I can't understand it. Um, and possibly from there, that might be a good segue to go into our top three and bottom three drivers, Timo. Do you want me to go first for once? Why not? Why not? Well, yeah, that's big why I triggered the segue. My bottom three for W Series were Koyama and Sidakova, who both uh, I want to see more from them. Um, yeah, I like them both. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think sliding down the order she did, she's proven to me that she has the pace to, to score points. She scored points in both her races so far. So 14th, it's not it's not good enough from how I've seen so far. And I think she's probably accepted as a rookie. You, you're adopting my tough love strategy, so I'll allow it. Okay, I'll, I'll come round again. <laughs> if you've got it, you've got it. And she's got it. So keep showing me that you've got it, please, Irina. It'd be great. Um, and then Visser as well, just from the points that we mentioned. That might be a bit harsh because she's finally scored points. But that sliding back um, from the start, she's. I just... If we're going to have a real championship fight, Visser needs to start taking points off of Powell, off of Chadwick, and falling back to seventh place in the race, that's not how you're going to take points off them, especially when you're starting on the second row. So that's my bottom three. And I'll jump straight into my top three, which are Alice Powell and Fabian Volvend, which I don't think you can really argue with, top two drivers. And then Abby Pulling, I have to do a shout out for her because as a rookie goes, um, joining these drivers have had at least two more races experience than you in the car. Didn't look out of place at all. How about you, Timo? Well, you've got two of my top three as well, because Fabian, there's no no explanation needed there. And Abby Pudding, just because of, it was just a great, great debut and uh, pretty much a dream come true. I match her in so many ways. Um, and then I've taken one of your bottom three and put her in my top three and hoping that it'll push, if we combine forces, it'll push things forward a bit more. I've got Visser in the top three there because it's it's it was just nice to see that she's maybe getting back to where we where you, where we were used to seeing her. So maybe I, hopefully I'm not premature on that. We'll find out. Not quite on the podium though, Timo. Eh? Not quite on the podium. No, no. But uh, maybe it's hungry. Maybe it's hungry. Fingers crossed. By um, as as for the bottom three, I've got Marta Garcia, which because again I just. I think that's the one that confuses me the most. I don't know what's going on there. And then uh, Isla Agron I had there because she kind of had a bit of a nothing weekend and kind of didn't see a lot from her at all in any of it. So I just kind of just, I, I chose her for that reason. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not particularly um, sure what's going on with Isla Agron because I know I was aware of her beforehand as she'd been doing a lot of racing in America. And then I just haven't really seen anything of Abby Eaton as well, although she did a decent overtake this time around. These, some of these newcomers I wanted to see and get them joining in. But apart from Sidakova, it's been 
um, a little bit of the seam up at the top. So um, Little mentioned that beaten there. She had a decent weekend, I thought, but it was better. It was a step in the right direction, a couple of nice overtakes as well. So maybe, but maybe that was the, uh, the energy of the home crowd a bit as well. Yeah, and for my last in the bottom three, I've gone for Sabre Cook again because all right qualifying, but then didn't really go anywhere in the race and kind of went a bit backwards. And then the only reason that she inherited a, a further place at the grid was due to a penalty for, for Hawkins. So I didn't really, uh, another weekend that wasn't very inspiring from the American. And for someone who was in the 2019 season, you kind of hope for a bit more progress by now, but uh, not yet. Yeah, well, it's going to be another race again in W Series uh, in two weeks, where we're going to Hungary. Um, so thank you, Timo. And where can people find your motorsport thoughts if they want them? Well, they can find me here on GB Grandstand, of course. They can also find me over on Drive Trove, and you can search for me on YouTube by Googling on the curves. Yeah, those are in the link below or in the description below. And then for myself, you can find my writing on gpgrandstand.com and on fortlock.com for my Saturday F1 news. Search F1 Week that was on YouTube. And of course, I'm on Grand Prix Grandstand TV YouTube channel where you'll find me interviewing drivers and yeah, shouting at W Series drivers apparently for doing better. But thank you for watching us talk about F All. Keep your eyes peeled for the next episode where you'll see us talking F All, either about Formula Two or Formula One. Mm -hmm.